Let's sew a punch needle pillow. If you didn't already know, monk's cloth is extremely prone to unraveling. So I'm going to use fray chuck to draw a line all the way around the pillow, about two inches from that finished punched edge. Once this dries, it hardens the fabric so that it can't unravel. And unless you have a serger sewing machine, this is the only way to keep that monk's cloth from fraying. While my fray check dries, I'm gonna use some leftover upholstery fabric to cut out some rectangles for the back of my pillow. I'm going to make two rectangles that are 15 by 17 inches wide. By making two rectangles the same size, it gives me a couple of options for the closure of my pillow. I can either overlap them to make an envelope or I can line them up and add buttons. To finish the backing pieces, I'm going to take the long side of my fabric and fold it over half an inch and set that fold with my iron. And then to conceal that raw edge, I'm going to fold that fabric over another inch and again, set it with my iron. And then I'm gonna use my sewing machine to sew a nice straight stitch right along the edge of that fabric. This is going to make the backing pieces look very nice and polished. Once the fray check line has dried, you can cut off the excess monk's cloth. Just make sure you cut above that line and not past it, otherwise your fabric will unravel. Now it's time to add the backing fabric, and there are two ways you can do this. I am overlapping my backing fabric by one inch so that I can add a button, but if you want to forego buttons, you can overlap that fabric about three inches and then continue to pin all the way around. If you've got a lot of extra backing fabric that goes out past your monk's cloth, you can give this a trim. Here's a trick to sewing a punch needle pillow really easily. Instead of using your walking presser foot, go ahead and switch to a zipper presser foot. You want the needle to get as close to that fabric as possible, and this is gonna enable you to get right up along the edge. So I like to feel where my stitches are and then just move my needle in a straight line as close to those stitches as possible. We're not quite ready to flip the pillow inside out, but I wanna show you what your seam will look like. As you can see, you've got a little bit of monk's cloth showing between the stitches and the backing fabric, and this is okay. The goal is just to get as close as you can. If you have a serger sewing machine, you can skip the next few steps and just serge around the edge you just sewed. But if not, you're going to trim the backing fabric, and then you're going to fold the monk's cloth over about half an inch, and then fold it over again and pin into place. This is gonna do two things. First, it's gonna give you a really nice finished edge to your pillow, but second, it's gonna protect that raw monk's cloth edge and keep it from being able to unravel after it's sewn. After you've got all of your sides pinned, it's time to sew. And you're still using the zipper foot here so you can get right along that folded edge and you're just gonna do a straight stitch all the way around the pillow. Now it's time to flip your pillow inside out and add some buttons. Since sewing buttons is not my favorite thing, I am opting to use one large button that can do the job of keeping my pillow closed. All you have to do is mark on your fabric where you want that button to go, and then use a button presser foot on your sewing machine to sew the buttonhole. If you haven't done this before, I highly recommend watching a YouTube video and practicing on some scrap fabric because if you mess up, you may have to take out your backing fabric in order to get it right. To open the buttonhole, you'll use a seam ripper or scissors. And again, just be super careful because if you mess up, you have to take the backing fabric off. And the last step is sewing that button on. So line it up with that buttonhole and then use a needle and thread. I'm using some embroidery floss. And you're just gonna run it under the button a few times and tie tightly to secure. And then you've got yourself a pillow. 
You can care for your pillow by spot cleaning anytime it gets dirty, but there's no need to run it through the washer or dryer. And if you have any questions about punch needle or need some pattern inspiration, be sure to check out theurbanacres.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.